Hi, it's me again. This time we're gonna be talking about Beauty Retouch. Beauty Retouch is mainly taking beautiful models with beautiful faces and make them look even prettier, if that's even possible. More or less like a digital makeup. In my opinion, if you're okay with makeup, you should be fine with digital makeup. It's pretty much the same thing. That's where you can fix some mistakes of the makeup. You could also make the skin even softer, the eye lines even sharper. And this is the first project of the Green Fairy. My buddy Raphael had this idea about a green fairy and it's pretty much a portrait shot of a woman with some mushrooms growing out of the hair and some leaves coming out of the neck and head. And our illustrator friend named Kyle made this really nice concept of the green fairy. Then I photographed this actress called Larissa and I basically used two lights, one coming from the top and the ring light coming from the background. And in this project, I'm gonna show you how to do camera raw, what are the tricks, what you should really know about camera raw, how to do masking. I'm gonna show you how to do smart skin retouch. What? how to mix CG elements into a shot, and also lots of grading. But how do you start doing beauty retouch? What's the first rule of doing beauty? If you're a photographer, the first thing you should do is get a model or actress, girlfriend, your boyfriend, it could be your cousin, whatever. Just take somebody that you think that look nice and it's gonna look pretty in the picture because that's what beauty retouch is all about. It's about beauty. And for me, the first rule of beauty retouch is shooting raw. And if you're still not familiar with raw, shots or never heard about it you should definitely catch up because iphone and gopro all the big brands are using raw now as a standard format because with a raw shot you have way more range to play with instead of a standard jpeg or a flat format so this is a jpeg you cannot do much with it because it's flat and this is the raw shot so the rush shot means that you don't have only a bit of information and with this much range you can take something that is really bright and make it really dark or find somewhere in between. And there's different exposures together. This is the raw shot. It's this sandwich of information. It's not only one exposure, it's actually 12 or 14 bit of range for you to play with the exposure and get different temperature or different colors. And the first thing you should know is how to use the camera raw. I think camera raw is actually my favorite thing in Photoshop. And the reason why camera raw is so cool, it's because you can get an image looking really pretty without even opening Photoshop. So let's jump into camera raw and see how we do all those things. This is my raw shot. I shot Larissa with uh, phase 100 megapixels and that gives me a huge resolution. You're gonna have access to that as well, which is almost 11K. And I shot her at 250 FPS. I think that's a good speed if you're shooting a person. You don't wanna get anything out of focus in case she moves. And I got my ISO at 50 because I'm shooting with a flashlight and I don't wanna get noise on my shot. So as low as you go with the ISO, the better because you don't want to get noise on your picture. And I shot with the 16 aperture because I wanted to have a little bit of depth of field, a little bit of out of focus on the background and a little bit of out of focus on the foreground, but not too much. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open in Photoshop. So I could also drag to Photoshop. I could drag to the Photoshop icon or double click. And there are many things you can learn about camera raw, but this time I wanna focus on the things that I use for beauty retouch. And the first thing I want you to know is this guy down here. Just click on it and you need to check open in Photoshop as mod objects. And the reason to do that, it's because you want to be able to go back in time and adjust your settings at any point. I'm not sure why Photoshop doesn't have that checked as a standard, but we don't have to bother with that. One of the first lighters you're going to see is the white balance. And you can have automatic white balance by clicking the eyedrop up here. And what you have to do is just clicking the white point of your image. And let's say somewhere here is my white point. And I can adjust manually the temperature. In this case, I think Larissa went to the beach one day before you can see by her bikini marks. And because of that, her skin was a little bit too magenta. And I wanna balance that. I don't want this fairy looking like she lives at the beach. So I'm gonna lower my temperature. I wanna make her skin a little colder, but not too much. So I'm gonna go somewhere around there. I think she's still looking a little bit too magenta. So what I want to do is go to the other side, to the green side, but not too much. She's not Hulk. 
So I'm gonna go minus 100. And next in line is my exposure. You should avoid burning the shadows because that's not gonna print well. And you should definitely avoid blowing the highlights because that's not gonna print well as well. So I'm gonna go somewhere around one or 1.5. You don't really need to bother with the settings. That's not set in stone. You can always go back in time because this is a smart object. So you could always go back and adjust your settings at any point. So at first, all you need to do is get a nice start. You're definitely gonna adjust this on the way. Contrast, pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna go minus 25 because I think the image is a little bit too contrasty. Yeah, I think minus 25 should be fine. And highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. Uh, kind of the same highlights and whites they deal with the white points and highlights and shadows and blacks with the blacks and the shadow areas and just by looking at my highlights I think I got a, a nice start over there I don't think I should increase it too much uh, maybe just a little bit I'm gonna go 25 and with my shadows there are some points on her hair some areas that are too dark I'm gonna make that a little brighter as well because I want to have information to work in Photoshop and to have the power to make that darker or lighter so camera should be neutral you shouldn't go too harsh or anything just get a nice neutral image to start with clarity is a nice one but just be careful with that because it could make everything too contrasty uh, in this case I'm not gonna use any clarity and if you go the other way you're gonna make everything softer it's a kind of dehaze. Now, vibrance and saturation are kind of the same thing. If I go minus 100 on the vibrance, some of the color and light information are gonna keep the same. If I go minus 100 on the saturation, I'm gonna lose all my color and the light information on my image is gonna change a little bit. I definitely recommend vibrance. I think it's a little nicer. Uh, I'm gonna go minus 25. I think the colors are just too saturated. And that's good enough for the basics. Now this next tab is a tone curve. You could play with the highlights and I wish curve was a little bit like this. This is really nice to have that kind of a evolved curve tool because you have all those lighters down here and this adjusts your curve in a way that it's much simpler to understand than the curve in Photoshop. To be fair, I never used this, so I'm not gonna be teaching something that I don't use. Next in line is the detail. The detail is very important when you're shopping your thing. I really like the hair and everything she has on her skin. I want to clean it, but just not too much. I don't want to get it over retouched. With the sharpness, I just have to go as far as I want to. Just be careful to not be too sharp, otherwise her skin is gonna look like a crocodile, and that's not fair to Larissa. So I'm gonna go something around 75. It's really cool to use the sharpening in the raw because it works a little better than the sharpness in Photoshop, and that's because you have more bits, more range to sharpen your things. The noise reduction is pretty cool as well in this case you can see there's a little bit of noise on the flat areas like the white bits of the eye and you can see if I go 100 you're gonna lose all the noise of the image it reminds me the surface blur and you can control the detail the luminance detail I'm gonna go 25 and maybe 50 on the luminance so luminance controls how strong your noise reduction is gonna be I don't want to lose the whole noise of the image so I'm gonna go somewhere around 20 and 10 I usually go half of the number that I have on my luminance because I don't want to lose the whole detail. I want to keep some of that, but I think that's good enough. And I don't think you should bother with any of this because I never used it. I only used these two up here and these two up here. So the next in line is the HSL and grayscale tab. And this is pretty cool because even before you open Photoshop, you have the power to have uh, more saturation on your greens, less saturation on your greens, or any color you want. Let's say I wanna have my skin, which is probably red, a little redder, a little more saturated on my reds. And you have to understand that the skin is not only red, it's red, orange, yellow, and sometimes magenta. So if you wanna adjust the skin, you have to balance all those lighters and there is also the hue tab you can mess with the hue of the colors if I want to make my greens a little more yellow just drag this light of the greens down a bit and if I want to make my greens more cyan same thought just go to the other side in the saturation tab you can control how saturated your colors are gonna be so if I want to make my greens less saturated just play with the slider and more saturated same thinking 
Now luminance, luminance is pretty nice because it controls the luminance within the color. So if I want to make my greens lighter or my greens darker, I could play with that. To be fair, I don't want to mess with any color because I'm going to just add within Photoshop. But for many cases, it, this is pretty handy because you can have many color adjustments even before you open Photoshop. In the case you're working with many shots and you want to get the same adjustments just within camera raw, you have the ability to do that. Next in line, split toning. To be fair, I never use this, so who cares? Lens correction is pretty cool because you can control the distortion by checking this box, enable profile corrections. Just by clicking phase one, which is the camera that I use, I have all the parameters that I use on the shot. What it does is pretty much controls the distortion of the vignetting and the geometric distortion of the shot as well. And to be fair, this is looking a little better because it's making the whole image a little less wide. It helps a lot with the vignetting and you can control the correction amount of the vignetting right here. You could play with the distortion and also with the vignetting. But if you don't want to do any profile corrections, you could uncheck that and you could go manual because with the manual, you can also control the distortion of your shot. And that's, that's looking good. Nice one, Larissa looking beautiful and in here you can control the vignetting of your shot by going amount and the midpoint controls how far the vignetting is gonna go the fx tab you can control the dehaze which is kind of the opposite of clarity it takes the haze out of the image that kind of smoky effect uh, you also have the grain it makes the same effect of noise in this case i cropped a little bit of the image so this vignetting is gonna relay to the crop that i have pretty neat and the next in line is camera calibration. To be fair, I never play with this. I'm not really sure what this do you and if you know what it is all about and if you used it before, just let me know. Next in line is the presets. Click a new and that's gonna save anything you want in case you wanna access that later. But to be fair, I don't use this anymore because with the smart objects, you can always go back to your raw settings. I think the presets is a little bit old fashioned. It works if you're doing action, if you're playing with a batch, then I think it makes sense to have a preset that you're gonna reuse. But if you're using smart objects and only working with one image, I don't think that's gonna make much sense for you. And finally, the snapshot tab, you can get a snapshot of whatever you're doing. That's nice if you wanna compare different settings. But to be fair, I never use that. These guys right here, they are kind of nice because you can see side by side or split in half and see the difference that you made with your shot. In this case, you can see that I lost a lot of the magenta on Larissa's skin, way more neutral than it was. You can see that the teeth are a little brighter as well. We have more information, the highlights are more prominent and yes, much, much better. And you could always hit this guy or hit P is gonna show you how the image was in the beginning and it's really easy to compare and double check what you're doing just to see if you didn't lose anything it's good for you to try that out this guy right here you can copy the information of this shot and paste to another shot if you want to and this guy right here goes all the way to default now another great feature of camera raw that very few people know about is the graduated and the radio filter I'm gonna go graduate it and I'm gonna just click and drag and you're gonna straight away see what it does. And in this case, you get a whole new settings to play with in selected areas. And I could click and drag if that even makes sense. If I wanna make her chest a little darker, I could do that. And I could also click and drag and rotate, uh, do pretty much whatever I want with this gradient. Now with the radio filter, I could click and drag. I always go very high with the feather, so my selection is very soft and I can do whatever I want just in that area. And that's pretty cool. It helps a lot if you wanna make local adjustments even before you open Photoshop. And stay tuned for the next videos where I'm gonna be showing how do you retouch skin within Camera Raw and how you can do smart skin retouch within Photoshop. So catch you later.